Hi everyone, this is the uh, next topic which is coordinate geometry, uh, number three in the Pure Maths 1 series. Here's the uh, information that we're going to learn for coordinate geometry. For this first one, we're just going to focus on these first couple of bullet points, or actually just the first one. Find the length, gradient and midpoint of a line segment given the coordinates of the endpoints. Okay, um, this coordinate geometry stuff, we can uh, thank René Descartes, who came up with the idea of the Cartesian plane named in his honour. So here's a picture of uh, Mr. Descartes. I don't think he would have been called Mr. in those days. But um, <clears throat> very famous mathematician, philosopher, uh, religious guy. Uh, and he came up with this idea of the x and y axis that we use so much today uh, and that all of this is going to be based on this whole chapter that we're doing uh, so positive numbers going to the right negative numbers to the left and the y value is positive and negative very simple but a very powerful idea so you would have seen this bo this before as i've got here the exciting thing is that now we've got a link between geometry and algebra and let me show you what that means if you think about <clears throat> a simpler equation like y equals x plus one very simple equation uh, this is an equation with two variables in it so if you think of the solutions to this equation well x equals two and y equals three is one solution and there it is there you can see that red dot that's one solution to this equation here's another solution x is zero and y is one that also makes this equation true and there's many other solutions you can start thinking of. If you plot all the solutions, you start to see a pattern. In fact, all of the solutions to this equation lie on a straight line. <clears throat> and in fact, every point on that straight line is a solution to that equation. There's infinitely many solutions to that equation. So what we see here is the picture of a solution to an equation. And that's what a graph is, put really simply. So we're going to be dealing with straight lines on the in the main in this little unit of work. Now <clears throat> you can see these formulas here that we're going to talk about in this little presentation: uh, length, midpoint, and gradient of a straight line. I don't tend to use the formulas or remember them. I tend to just uh, do it a different way, which I'll explain. <clears throat> but if you like, you're learning formulas. They're the three formulas that. Let's first that look at the uh, midpoint. We take uh, two points, and I've just chosen minus two, minus two, and one, three here. Join up a line between them, and we want to find the midpoint right there. Now, how do we get that? Pretty simply, the midpoint is the average of the endpoints. So the average of the x values, the average of the y values. So if the x values halfway between minus two and one is negative a half, and for the y values halfway between minus two, right here, and three is a half. So the midpoint is minus a half, half. Pretty simple. You could also use the formula if you wanted to, which looks like that. There's the x values and the y values. <clears throat> so here we could put in the two uh, points that we had there and get the midpoint the same way. Okay. So there's another example there. Okay. As for length, let's take the same two points. The length, really easy just to use Pythagoras' theorem. The distance between the x values, minus 2 to 1, is 3. And the distance, if you like, between the y coordinates from minus 2 to 3 is 5. So if you just draw a triangle like that, you could draw a triangle over the top if you like, from there to there, and from there to there. So just using Pythagoras' theorem, we get the length of AB is square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared, which is the square root of 34. Okay, which is a third. You can leave it as an exact value or you can give it to three significant figures if you like for the length. If we look at it more generally, then that length there is just x2 minus x1. That length there is y2 minus y1. So Pythagoras' theorem says that's the length of AB. I like to actually work it out rather than use the formula. If you use the formula, this is what it would look like. You just have to make sure if you're using the formula that you're always starting with the same point. So minus 1, minus 4 squared, 
and then 2 minus negative 3 squared. As you can see, you get the, uh, you get the same answer. A little bit of simplifying here, guys. The square root of 50 is the square root of 25 times 2, which is root 25 times root 2, 5 root 2. This is just written a little bit simpler. Here's another example. And that's it. So the midpoint of any line is just the average of the x values and the average of the y values. The length is just using Pythagoras' theorem. Pretty simple. Okay, let's talk about straight lines and the gradients of a straight line. Uh, another really simple concept. Um, you've seen the formula. It's a really simple idea. So here we've got a, a straight line. The gradient I always just think of as rise over run. So if you just pick any two points on the line, so here I've chosen the point 0, minus 1, and the point 2, 3 on this line. The gradient is rise over run. So here the rise is 1, 2, 3, 4. The run is 2. And I always think of this run as positive, looking from left to right. Okay, so the gradient of this line is 2. Now, you can use the formula that I outlined on the previous page, which just says uh, rise over run, using the same thing, that 3 minus negative 1 is the rise, and 2 minus 0 is the run. Okay, so that's just using the formula, you get the same thing, which is the gradient of the line. Pretty simple. Okay, if we look at this example then, We've got two points, 1, 0, and negative 1, 4. If you get any of these questions, I'd always encourage you to draw it out, as I have here. The, uh, the midpoint of the line, the uh, length, and the gradient, you should be able to do really easily. So let's start with the length of the line. You can see I've just used Pythagoras' theorem. I haven't used the formula. I've just worked out the length of this line here. So I draw this little triangle, which helps. From 4 down to 0 is 4, from minus 1 across to 1 is 2. So root 4 squared plus 2 squared, square root of 20 or 4.47 long, that line is. Just units, you don't need to put any units here, centimetres or anything like this with the Cartesian plane, it's just units. Okay, so for the midpoint, halfway between the x values, halfway between minus 1 and 1 is 0, halfway between 4 and 0 is 2, so 0, 2 is the midpoint. And lastly, for the gradient. Now, in this case, you can see the line sloping down if we're looking from left to right. So I'd say that the rise here is negative 4. We've gone down 4 as we've moved across, and we've gone across 2. So the gradient here is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So there's the calculation there. Okay, just to emphasize again, all lines sloping upwards from left to right have a positive gradient all lines sloping down from left to right have a negative gradient the bigger the number for the gradient the steeper the line is the steeper it's sloping down okay you can see here the uh, green line has a gradient of negative a half of course when we go exactly flat then the line has a gradient of zero if our line is uh, vertical then the gradient is undefined. Okay, so this little point that I've made here is important. Always think of the run as positive going left to right. The rise is either positive or negative depending on the slope of the line. Okay, one more idea here, guys. One more idea is the angle of a line. The angle that the line makes with the x-axis, and in this case the positive x-axis. Uh, Really simply, if you remember your trigonometry, if you look at this right angle triangle I have drawn here, then tan of that angle is opposite over adjacent. Sokatoa, opposite over adjacent. So in this case, the opposite over the adjacent clearly is 1 over 1. But if we remember the formula for the gradient of this line, it's just rise over run, which is also 1 over 1. So tan of the angle and the gradient are the same thing. So, it's an important thing to realise. Tan of the angle and the gradient are the same thing. So, I know that the gradient of this line is 1, so tan of the angle is 1. On my calculator, I hit shift in the tan key and 1, 
my calculator should say that that angle there is 45 degrees, which makes sense. It's going through halfway there. If we wanted to find the angle between two lines, the process is finding the gradient of one line and working out the angle that that line makes with the x-axis, working out the gradient of another line, working out that angle. So in this case, we'd work out alpha and then beta. And subtracting those two gives us the gradient between the lines. Okay, if you're a little bit more mathematical, that's the kind of formula we're doing. The angle of one line minus the angle of the other. Okay, so that's how you can work with angles of lines. And that's the first part done for coordinate geometry.